Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at how to configure NAT on the Cisco ASA. This video is part of my CCIE Security Labs with Kelvin, playlist available on my YouTube channel for those that are not watching it on YouTube. As I always do, start off by listing some main points. So in regards to NAT on the ASA, this presentation is going to focus on post 8.4 code. Pre 8.4, the NAT differs in the way it's configured, so we will not be touching that today. However, if you want to find out more about that, please do take a look at the Cisco documentation. So there's four types of NAT uh, summarized. And these four types of NATs can be used on the ASA. So we've got static NAT, we've got dynamic NAT, and we've got dynamic PAT, as well as identity NAT. And we'll cover what each one of these are as we go through the presentation and demonstration. So the NAT concept on the ASA, it changed on code 8.4.1. As I mentioned earlier, uh, pre 8.4, the way that NAT is configured is slightly different on the ASA as opposed to how it's configured on uh, POST 8.4. NAT can be applied either using object NAT or twice NAT. Uh, Cisco actually recommend using object NAT where possible unless twice NAT, NAT features are required. So twice NAT is used when a source and destination address are translated. If you don't need to translate the destination address, it's normally enough to use object NAT. NAT is configured under network objects and when they are they're considered as object NAT. If they're not configured under um, object networks, or network objects rather, then they are considered to be either manual NAT or twice NAT. Object NAT cannot be configured under object groups, so you cannot um, use object groups to configure uh, NAT using object NAT. However, you can refer to the object groups when configuring manual NAT or twice NAT. And again, we'll take a look at all these different variations and how they're configured in the demonstration. The order of NAT is relevant, and we'll take a look at this also. And it's especially relevant when you've got more than one type of NAT configured. NAT on the ASA is supported in rooted and transparent mode deployments. Object networks and groups can only include IPv4 or IPv6 addresses. They can include both. So if you've got uh, object networks or groups or both, uh, you can either or you can only have um, IPv4 or IPv6. You can't mix the two together. So as I mentioned previously, there is an order of operation when it comes to NAT and the way it works on the ASA, and it uses a top-down approach. So there's three sections. Section one is the manual NAT or twice NAT rules. So these are the more specific uh, NAT rules that need to be matched, um, and these are normally when you're referring to twice NAT or, or manual NAT as it's called as well. So section one, policies will be uh, hit first and if there's a match that's found then um, the ASA will look no further because it's found its match similar to the way ACLs work. Section 2 looks at the um, network objects so we've got the static NAT, dynamic NAT and when it comes to dynamic NAT we've got a few considerations here and I've listed those here so the quantity of real IP addresses are assessed first the object with the smallest IP address will be assessed before an object with the largest IP address if an object has the same number of IP addresses the lowest IP address is assessed first um, i.e. 10.0.0.1 will be looked at before um, 
an object with 10011. If an object has the same address used, then the object name is assessed in alphabetical order. So, for example, ABC would become would would come before ADZ. So again, if the ASA has a look at the NAT rules and finds um, a network object NAT or object NAT in section two, then it will look no further. It won't go down to section three. It'll stop where it is. However, if there's no if there's no rules found in either section one or section two, and then we go back to twice NAT. So these are um, placed again twice NAT or manual NAT um, interchangeable between between the name. Um, but these section three kind of looks at the NAT rules that are um, less specific, um, but still still relevant, of course. So again, it is not found in section one or section two, then section three will be used. So I've got a few uh, examples here of how to configure the different types of NAT that we've just spoken about, and we'll look more at these in detail when we go into the demonstration in the lab. But the first one is the static NAT that I spoke spoke about. So static NAT is a one-to-one -one translation so you're translating one IP address um, to another IP address so in this example we have a real source address of 192.168.10.10 which is the inside local and we are um, mapping that to the 206.206.206.1 uh, IP address on the and that's the uh, inside global IP address so to configure static NAT we start by creating an object network for the mapped IP address so that would be the 206 206 206 one in this example we then create an object network for the rail host so that'll be the inside local 192.168.10.10 and then we use the object NAT to configure the static NAT. So the object NAT is configured under the real um, object network. You can also configure static NAT uh, the manual way or manual NAT, twice NAT. Um, however, again, it is recommended to use object NAT where necessary. In regards to configuring ASA dynamic NAT, so again the process is pretty much the same. However, dynamic NAT is where you are mapping a single or group of IP addresses to a pool of um, routable IP addresses. So in this example, we've got the inside host again. And that's actually been mapped to, in this case, uh, 206.206.206.2. And that's out of the dynamic NAT pool that's configured on the ASA. So again, the process is pretty much the same in terms of configuring dynamic NAT. So we configure an object network for the mapped IP range. So notice the word range because we're configuring the pool, the dynamic NAT pool. So that would be, in this case, that would be the pull down here. Once we've done that, we create an object network for the rail host. So again, that would then be the inside local. And then we use the object NAT of the rail object network um, to configure dynamic NAT. And for those that are not familiar with NAT, don't worry, we'll take a look at this on the SA in more detail. So configuring dynamic uh, PAT, so port address translation. So what this does is it actually maps uh, a group or single IP address to, um, it's often a group, it will map um, to a single 
IP address, routable IP address, and it will use the ports, the source ports, to um, perform the NAT, and hence the reason it's called port address translation. So in this example, we see the inside local host again, um, and we can see that it's um, mapped source is, is being mapped to the inside global, but we can see that the source port in this example is 80. So to configure dynamic path, we create an object network for the rail host, and then we use object NAT to configure dynamic path. So this is pretty much straightforward um, in, in terms of how we configure that because we don't need any um, mapped object network because we're essentially just mapping it to the uh, interface and performing port address translation. And last but not least, we then have um, identity in that. So identity in that is a essentially a known NAT. So what you're doing is you're mapping the rail address to itself. So rail address to rail address. So in this example, you see the inside local 192.168.10.10, and we see that it's being mapped to itself 192.168.10.10 as well. So to configure identity in that, we create an object network for the rail host and then we use object NAT to configure identity in that. And I've also put here that you can also use twice NAT um, to do this as well if you wish. So our topology in our demonstration today looks like this. We have a single ASA that we'll be using and we've got uh, inside we've got a DMZ and we also have another network which is attached to a server and what we're going to do is we're going to configure the ASA using the different types of NAT and give you all an idea of what it looks like and how it's configured we'll then take a look on ASDM once we've configured it using the CLI just to see what it looks like on there as well So we have a fresh ASA here, no configuration on it, it's totally blank. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off by configuring the interfaces and getting the security levels assigned. So we'll start by configuring those interfaces. We'll start off with Gig00 which is connected to our free VPCs. We'll give this a name of inside. We'll leave the security level no shut and we'll give it an IP address of 192.168.10.1 slash 24. And we'll do interface gig01 that connects to our DMZ server and we will give this a name of DMZ Oops. and a security level of 50 and an IP address of 172.16.10.1 again slash 24 I'll shut down and then last of all we'll configure gig02 And we'll just call this one outside. Leave the security level at zero. And I'll shut down and we'll give it an IP address of 209.209.209.1. And it's a slash 30.252. There we go. What we'll also do is we'll just create a route to the outside 192.168.20.0 network which is where server 1 is located um, so to do that root outside 192.168 anything going to that go by 209.209.1 which is uh, root 1 to 1 uh, sorry go by 2 that's right 
We'll also enable ICMP inspection, so policy map, global policy, class inspection, underscore default, inspect ICMP, that's just so we can ping. Okay. So if we just go back to our presentation again, we'll start off with configuring static NAT. So we'll do a one to one NAT. So we'll start off by configuring one to one NAT first. So to do that, just exit out of this. Before we do that, let's just make sure the VPCs can actually ping. Let me just see if these have got IPs configured. So no, we'll configure these. IP 192.168.10.10, we'll give this one. 192.168.10.1, which is the ASA. Let's just set up a continuous ping to that gateway for now okay that's fine that one's configured and then we need to configure VPC 5 192.168.10.12 and Ping 192.168.10.1. Let's leave these continuous pings going. Okay, that's fine. Let's just make sure the DMZ server's configured. Okay, so we'll just configure this one. IP 192.168.20.10 uh, and again we'll just make sure we can ping the gateway for server 1 20.1 ok that's fine ok so now we know, we know that the endpoints are configured or the VPCs are configured We'll first start off by configuring static NAT. So what we'll do is we'll configure a static NAT for VPC3 going to server 1. And the good thing about static NAT is that because the IP address in which the um, VPC is um, mapped to um, allows the bidirectional communication between server uh, to VPC if uh, the if the flow is permitted via an ACL so we can we can take a look at that as well so what we'll do we'll start by creating an object network for the mapped um, I, uh, for the mapped IP address so we'll call this VPC mapped uh, VPC free mapped and we'll give this a host of Let's map it to say 2082828.1. And we'll do object network VPC free. And then that host is 192.168. So this is a rail address 10.10. .10. So then within the rail uh, network object, we then can configure NAT. Uh, static NAT for this. So what we do is we do NAT and we're coming from inside to outside and it's going to be um, static and we're mapping it to, so if you do a question mark there you can see map type address so we're going to map it to the group that we created so it's going to be VPC free mapped 
and then that's it. Okay, so that's our first static NAT entry using object NAT created. So if we test the floor now from um, VPC3 to server 1, we should be able to connect no problem at all. But just before I do that, I'm just going to enable login so that we can take a look at what's going on. Yeah, that's fine so let's now from VPC 3 let's ping server 1 192.168.20.10 okay so we can see that that's successful and let's do a show now nah. so we can see now um, it comes under the auto policy, so under section 2 that we discussed because we are not using twice NAT, we were using object NAT. Um, so it comes under section 2 by default. So we can see that we've got our source VPC3 and our mapped um, IP address, and we can see here that we've got successful translations here. So if we just do a short XLIT. We can also see that we've got the NAT occurring as we expect here. If you just do a show NAT detail, you can get more output in terms of the IP address, the source, and a translated address as well. So the good thing, as I said about static NAT, is it allows that bi-directional communication because the um, mapped IP address is static, but um, if you're coming from a lower security level, um, obviously you're going to need an ACL to permit that flow as well, where necessary. So if we wanted to communicate from server 1 back to VPC 3, we would use the mapped um, IP address. So it'll be the 208, 208, 208 one So we can actually try that now. Ping 208, We'll leave that as a continuous ping and we can see here that it's timing out. So if we check the ASA, we should be able to see that it's getting denied here. So we can see from our source which is coming from the outside, 192.168.20.10, going to the destination, VPC3. As you can see, it's referring to the real IP address, but the server outside doesn't know the IP address technically. So to do that, we would need to create an IP uh, an access list to allow that. So we can do that. So we'll just do access list... Um, Let's call it outside and we'll do uh, permit and for the purpose of this we'll just quickly input the uh, so permit IP 192.168.20.0 we will create objects for them and then we're going to permit it to 192.168.10.10 and that's the host ok so now we'll do access group outside and then it's input traffic interface is outside and that's it so we should be good now technically we should be getting so there we go we can see now that we're getting a successful response now that we add that added that ACL. If we just do a show on that, we can see that we also have the untranslated hits now as well. And that should continue to rise because we're communicating with VPC free as well. So if we just do a show slit again, you've got that translation there as well. So that's static NAT 
and how it's configured on the ASA. So what we'll do now is we'll go on to the next one, which is dynamic NAT. So we'll configure dynamic NAT now on the ASA. So what we'll do first is we will create the dynamic NAT range range that we spoke about so we'll do object network and we'll call this dynamic NAT and then we we'll specify range and let's give this range uh, we'll use the same subnet but we'll just change the octet so 2828.2.2 and to 28208.5 so that's our dynamic NAT range done uh, now what we'll do is we'll we'll create an object well let's, let's create an object group actually for VPC 4 and 5 so object uh, group network VPC 4 to 5 and then we'll do uh, network object host 192.168.10.11 and 12. So what we'll do now is we'll do NAT inside to outside we're going to the server again we'll do source dynamic and it will be VPC yeah so the real IP addresses so it'll be VPC 4 to 5 that group that we created and then to dynamic Now, so if we just do a show run that now, we can see there that we've got the dynamic NAT configured. So if we just do a show NAT again, we can see we've got the manual NAT now, which is in place. So this comes under section one configured for this dynamic NAT. So we've got no translated hits yet because we've not started to um, send any traffic or any packets to server one from any either VPC4 or VPC5, but we will do that in a moment. The difference with Dynamic NAT is um, we cannot use, uh, because the VPCs or the inside doesn't have a fixed permanent mapped address that can use any any of the IP addresses from the pool that means the um, server cannot communicate with uh, the VPCs um, like static NAT so what we'll do is we'll now go on to VPC 4 and 5 and we'll attempt to ping 192.168.10.11 We'll set up con continuous ping. We can see VPC4 is fine. Ping 192.168.20.10. And again, we can see that that's also fine as well. So now if we just do a show NAT, we can see that we're getting the translated hits now. So that's good. And if we just do a show NAT detail just to confirm, we can see that the source the sources, sorry, is 10.11, which is VPC4, and 10.12, which is VPC5. And we can see that it's getting translated to the addresses that we have given it in the range. So if we just do a show xlate now, we can see that we've got NAT from 10.11 and 10.12, and we can see that they're using two different IP addresses so one's using dot three one's using dot four so that tells us that our 
um, NAT rule that we configured is working as it should and it's taking IP addresses from uh, that range. So that's dynamic NAT configuration and that's how we configure it on the ASA. Now we'll take a look at uh, how to configure dynamic PAT on the ASA. This is pretty much straightforward and as I mentioned earlier all we're doing is we're taking a set of IP addresses and we're mapping it to the interface uh, in which we want it to uh, in which we want to send traffic out of um, and all we're doing is we're translating the ports so what I'll do is I'll create an object network for inside and we'll give it uh, 192.168.10.0 and within here all we need to do is because we specified the subnet let's go for communication between the inside and the DMZ server so what we'll do is we'll send anything um, so we'll not inside to DMZ and this will be um, dynamic interface that's essentially how you do pat so if we have a look at that that should fall under dynamic so we can see our second rule here we're using the um, sources the inside interface and we're translating it to the DMZ interface so anything coming from VPC 3, 4 or 5 going to DMZ server should be uh, natted using port address translation so what we'll do is we'll just stop all these pings and what we'll do is we'll ping 172.16.10.10 on a continuous ping ok that's VPC 3 4 5 ok all of those are successful let's just do a show on that we can see that we're getting translation hits here which is good so show on that detail so we can see that the origin is the whole subnet and it's being translated to 172.16.10.1 which is the ASA's uh, interface so if we just do a show xlate we can see that we've got port address translations and we can see that they're being translated um, using the ports, source ports which is exactly what we should should be seeing so we've got quite a few entries here so that's pretty straightforward on how to configure port address translation so I'll just stop all those pings and last but not least we're going to take a look at how to configure identity in that So now we're going to do the identity in that and what we'll do is we'll map VPC3 to DMZ server um, and if we actually take a look at the ASA we'll see that we are using um, object NAT for that and that's the last one that we configured so anything from just do show on that detail you can see anything from 192.168.10.0 slash 24 going to that server um, or going to that subnet will be mapped um, using port address translation so what we'll do is we'll actually configure uh, identity in that and we'll do that by um, using manual NAT uh, so that we essentially match the manual NAT before we would match this rule here So we already have an object network for VPC3, I think. Run? Yeah, 
Yeah, we do. So we've got one here, so we'll use this one. So what we'll do to create a manual NAT is we'll do anything NAT inside to DMZ saw static VPC free and then when we come to specify the mapped source we're going to keep that as VPC free so that right there is our identity in that and then destination destination is going to be static and we'll do uh, I don't know if we had let me just double check see if we've got an object for the server don't think we do no we don't so what we'll do is we'll create an object network for DMZ server and that will be host 172.16.10.10 ok so now we can go back to our manual NAT which is here this is asking us for the in fact we don't even need to put uh, a destination because what we're going to do is anything actually going from inside to DMZ um, we're just using a static NAT for the source we don't need to uh, do anything with the destination so we'll just go ahead and we'll press enter on that and we'll do show NAT detail um, so where is that? Da, da, da. So there we go. So that's our. So as I said, under manual NAT, uh, because we configured it under manual NAT and not under the object, it falls under manual NAT section one. And we can see inside to DMZ, we can see VPC free to VPC free. So if you actually look at the translation, we've got one nine two one six eight ten dot ten going to or being translated to 10.10 .10 itself so essentially this rule should be matched for VPC free when going to DMZ server um, before the subnet um, object uh, NAT is matched so let's test that so again we'll go to the same destination we should see now hits on that policy so there we go there we go so we see four hits on on a newly created policy so essentially if we do a shake slit yeah that's right you're only gonna see these entries here because it's not into itself but that's how you configure identity in that and we can see there that the translations are still going up so that's essentially bypassing uh, bypassing that if you like so that covers all the uh, different types of NAT you can have on the ASA uh, we'll take a look now on uh, ASDM and see what it looks like on ASDM so I just need to set this up really quick. So I'm just going to do in the first gig zero of just do a shy IP address. Yeah, gig zero three six eight uh, one zero seven dot twenty. I think it is. Level 100, no shot. Okay, that's fine. There's TTP server enable. Uh, anything from it's just it from that oops management uh, gig 03 correct yep. 
Okay, so let's try and open ASDM now. Just before I do that, I do need to add this to OSPF. Uh, network 192.168.107.0. Are you free? That should be enough. Just come out of that. Okay, that's better. Okay, so now we're on ASDM. Just give this a second to load the config on the device. Okay. So what we'll do now is we'll go across to configuration, down to firewall, and if we click on that rules, we can see all our NAT rules configured here. So this is what it looks like on the uh, ASDM. So we've essentially got the source interface, destination interface, and then the uh, real source, and then the map source, the destination, and the map destination here, and service as well. So we can see there, this particular one is the PAT rule, the part address translation one. So the translated address addresses the DMZ interface. We can see the IP address that is uh, to be translated. And if we click advance, we can see there that we've got the source interfaces inside and destination interface is DMZ. We then have our Uh, where's the VPC free one? So this is, let's show you this one actually. So this is the uh, let's just edit that. So this is the uh, using the dynamic NAT. So this is using the the range. So we've got the the the, the range of dynamic NAT IP addresses here, and we've got the um, source address which is using that object group that we specify for VPC four and five. And what we can see here, the source interface is going to be inside for those source addresses. Destination interface is going to be outside. And then we've got the translated packet down here. So the source address is translated. This um, source up here is mapped to this source here. So there's the dynamic NAT range. We, in this case, don't care about the destination as that stays the same. So that's just a quick look guys at how it looks on ASDM. I won't go into any more detail on that. Um, I have covered this also on my website www.networkwizkid.com forward slash blog. You can check out the post on there as well. So with that, I will leave you with um, some useful links and particularly the bottom one, which is uh, configuring NAT on the ASA as we've just done there and it's got a few more details. I will include these links in the video description, but thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, please go ahead and subscribe, hit the notifications bell so that when I upload new videos you are notified and please leave a like on this video. If you've got any questions please feel free to drop me a comment under the chat section of this video or reach out to me on any of my social media platforms or my website. Thank you for watching.